Okay, guys. Yep. One more time from the top. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. I'm sorry, I had my capo on. I didn't realize that. Okay, well, well, yeah. uh, I, w I was playing the wrong song. <sighs> okay, well. <laughs> I, I agree with everybody. That was really horrible, but we're live. Oh, Did you oh, know that? Guys, ready? Here we go. Pastor Michael, and this is Evening Focus, and as I've told you before, music is one of my passions, and it's always better when we're able to play together. As we, uh, as we think about that tonight, what it's like to, to play music together, what it's like to uh, share meals together, there are a lot of things that are, that are better when we're able to to enjoy them together. And that was true also for the, the early Christians. In our, in our reading this coming Sunday from the book of Acts, it tells what happens after Jesus or after Peter's sermon on, on Pentecost Day. And 3,000 people were added uh, to the community of, of Jesus' church. And it describes how they lived together. It says, everyone was amazed by the many miracles and wonders that the apostles worked. All the Lord's followers often met together, and they shared everything they had. They would sell their property and possessions and give the money to whoever needed it. Day after day, they met together in the temple. They broke bread together in different homes and shared their food happily and freely while praising God. Everyone liked them, and each day the Lord added to their group others who were being saved. In the, in the story of Acts, which is the second volume of Luke's Gospel, written by the same author, we get a picture of what Jesus was always talking about. I mean, in Luke's Gospel, he's always sitting down and eating with people, and it's in Luke's Gospel where he tells the story about the, the Samaritan who took, uh, gave compassion to the, to the man, probably a Jew, who had been beaten and left on on the side of the road by robbers, um, and how he freely, uh, generously gave uh, to nurse him back to health. And that was Jesus' example of what it looks like to be a neighbor. Uh, he called everyone to love their neighbors as themselves. And so in Acts, you get a picture here of what that looks like when we care for one another, when we live together and share our, our life together. And uh, I'm really excited tonight that we have the opportunity to talk with uh, Valerie Jones, who is the volunteer engagement consultant with uh, an organization called Safe Families for Children. Um, and it's, we're going we're to hear about some ways that we, can, that we can share as they share. Uh, I like that this story is in Acts because it's, it's like totally by, beyond us in terms of the, the sharing that we're likely to do. Um, but it helps us to celebrate those ways in which we are already connecting to one another as neighbors and really caring for one another with compassion. And it always challenges us to think beyond where we are already, that we might live into what it means to be the body of Christ, which is what we talked about last week. Well. I want to invite us into some prayer before we get on the Zoom meeting with 
Valerie. Uh, so, since we're going to be talking about families tonight, uh, I want to start with, with families. Um, it's easy to imagine that there are a lot of families out there who are struggling right now. Um, some have lost their income and are trying to figure out how to, to make it in terms of rent and in terms of food, uh, clothing, all the basic needs. Um, a lot of families have been living pretty close together, not getting to go out. Children aren't going to school. Parents aren't going to work. Uh, that's a lot of together time. Um, sharing life together is, is a gift, but it can also be a challenge. So for those who are struggling financially, emotionally, uh, with the stress of, of this time, Gracious God, we pray that you would touch them again with your love and your compassion, that you would sustain them by the power of your spirit, that they might give over the stress and the anxiety to the presence of your spirit, and that you would bring them healing. We pray in particular for children who in this time are in need of safe homes. Sometimes the stress becomes overwhelming, and everybody needs a break. We give you thanks, Lord, for safe families, for children, and for other organizations that are supporting and strengthening parents and their children. Use us. Use the gift that you've given to us. Use the compassion that you've poured out among us that we might be the instruments of your love and your grace for children who are in need. We continue to pray for those who are sick right now. The numbers continue to climb. And so for those who are struggling with illness of any kind, but especially with the COVID disease, that you would give them your love and your strength. And we pray as well for those who are caring for them, whether those are family members at home or medical staff in hospitals and clinics. Continue to be a source of strength to those who are giving themselves freely day after day to care for others, for their neighbors. I'll light a candle for the healthcare workers, and then let's light a candle also for all of us as the church, that as we continue to live through these days, we might remember the early church and the example of Jesus, that it would empower us to be love for one another for our own families, and for the community of the church. Bless us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All rise. So I'm just going to take a moment to get on a meeting with Val here, and then we'll have a chance to talk. She is, I see. All right. Put that up to the screen. Well, hello, Val. Hi. It's great to have a chance to talk with you. Uh, we're live right now with those who are watching our evening focus program. And so I want to introduce everybody to Valerie Jones. And uh, Val, I want to invite you to start by just sharing with us a little bit about the, the mission and the goals of your organization, Safe Families for Children. So Sick Families for Children was founded by Dr. Dave Anderson in 2003. He founded it because he understood and realized the need for children to be able to be safe and to keep families intact, um, and also to reduce the number of, of children being put into foster care. He um, research has also found that social isolation is one of the main causes of child abuse. And so with that, he founded Safe Families which is a movement of people that become the social safety net to a community. 
So we became a social support system for the families that needed it. And all of this is done through the church and by church volunteers. Um, we have just started in Rock County about five years ago. We serve also in Walworth County, Risney, and, and Kenosha as well. Um, Rock County is a little bit more specialized at this time right now because we are working through a grant by the Hendricks Family Foundation. Um, we want to build an understanding and preventative system that can reduce the number of youths entering or re-entering the county services, mainly families needing to enter CPS. We are building out our base of volunteers and are really hopeful and wanting to make an impact in our community use, um, by connecting with the churches as well. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any questions so far? So, about so CPS is Child Protective Services. That's the, the regular foster care program, right? Yes, okay. yes. And so the difference between, say, families and CPS is that um, we, the host families that take the children in are not paid by the county. Um, they are from the churches, and they're basically just volunteering their time, volunteering their um, their money and their homes to these families to love on them. And then the parents of these children, these families in need, can take their children back whenever they want to. And one of the great things about Safe Families and why it is so successful is that it is based on um, the parents voluntarily giving up their children before it becomes a situation where abuse can occur. Mm -hmm. And then after the family is um, reunited, the, um, the host family and also the church members that have come together to become a circle of support for this family, um, they just become this awesome like extended family or social support system for the family in need. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's great because it's building relationships within the community and it's using the church and utilizing the church in a great way to serve the community as well. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a fantastic vision. It is. Now you said a little bit ago that social iso isolation is the greatest cause for child abuse. Yes. And so this period of time right now where we're all socially isolated, at least physically distanced from each other, has yes. to be really challenging. It, it really is. We've actually seen a high rate of domestic abuse and also child abuse in this time because of the stress of the coronavirus. Um, you know, people with their, like the unknown, fear of the unknown with their jobs and things and families being together just under the same roof for 24 hours a day has really, um, it has caused a lot of issues with that. And even though right now we're not able to really host children, we are trying to encourage virtual relationships and friendships through Zoom through Facebook and email and things like that, and really just asking the church members and volunteers to reach out to those families in need and asking them, you know, like, how, how can we help you today? How can we pray for you today? And things like that. And so yeah. even though we can't physically be together, they can still be an emotional support for their um, for those families in need. Mm -hmm. So I imagine there were probably some children already in the care of families before this started to continue to be there. Yes. Yeah, but, but new families... Or, or new intake the beginning with with children and new families does doesn't happen right now right so right now our hosting is kind of on pause however um in this time of crisis we have seen a great need for other just tangible needs have been one of the main things that we need help with or that people have been asking about mm -hmm. and uh and especially in rock county we have several families that are actually living in hotels or motels and um, just asking for toiletries and just food for their family and things like that. And those are such great ways to help um, reach out to the community community through this time and, leave, and uh, just kind of be Jesus to them in a very tangible way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so say a little bit more about your particular role because that's what you're specifically involved with, right, is reaching out to the congregations. Yes, so I am the volunteer coordinator for Rock County, and so my job is to go around to churches and meet the pastors and create relationships with the churches and help them introduce um, safe families to them and to promote what we do, what our mission is, and how churches and how safe families can connect with each other to make a difference in the community. Mm -hmm. And so, so what are some of those ways? You've named some specific, concrete, tangible ways that people can reach out right now, but sort of what's the range of... Uh, of methods that congregations can connect with the work you do? 
So um, I mentioned the tangible items and goods. I'm also very big right now is just that virtual friendship and being able to connect, um, you know, church volunteers and things with like new moms, moms that are getting birth through this time where they're very isolated from their families because they really can't, um, you know, if their families can't come and visit them. Um, other ways that they can definitely help is through prayer. Um, just praying for the people who are losing their jobs, praying for the people that are, um, you know, really stressed out during this this time as well. That's been really one of the things that people have been asking for and things for safe families. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then um, when a when a congregation as a whole becomes involved with the the work of the organization, what what does that look like? So we begin, so there's basically a time timeline, it's like a, a year range, and first we present to the church, we talk to the pastor, we promote safe families, and then um, with the pastor's help, we try to identify like a ministry lead, and the ministry lead is a person that connects safe families with the church, and they are updating the church, or, um, they're updating safe families, and they kind of alert them about the needs that are going on in their area, and they're able to pass that need on to the volunteers, such as the host family and the resource friends and the, um, the family friend as well. And so it becomes this incredible um, this network, basically, of people going from us to, to one person. And then that person encouraging that, that whole congregation, a volunteer, their circle of people mm -hmm. to help out. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the host family, I mean, like you said, you're not able to arrange new hosts at this point, but when that becomes possible again, what is what exactly is the role of the host family? So the role of the host family is they're the ones that open their homes to the family in need if their children need to be um, you know, they if they're if the family um needs a break or is a babysitter or perhaps even if they decide they want to go to rehab and they um need their children to just be with a family for just a little bit. That's the what the host family does. Um, and then with that host family, there is that host family is surrounded by a circle of support, which is a resource friend. And that resource friend then helps the host family with dinners or things, the tangible goods that they can provide for that family. Um, the, and then also with that, we have the um, family friend who becomes friends, who befriends the family in need. And they kind of walk alongside that family and help them reach the goals that they, that they um, you know, that they create. And so they're not just in this stagnant point in their life and they're able to move on and move forward and they're not in that um in a crisis mode always if that makes sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they're not isolated any longer they're just exactly by, by exactly so we're surrounding people with love we're surrounding the host family with love and we're surrounding the, um the family in need with love and so one of the great things about safe family is that they are never alone the volunteers are always supported um you know we try to make, we make sure that there's a support from the church, we support them, and that we're always here for them as well with anything that they need. So we're, um, the family coaches, they are very they're professional, they're trained, and they can help with um, situations as well. And they're there to help the families, um, the families in need and the host families if there is a need that arises. And we connect them with the resources that they need as well. Mm -hmm. Again, it's, that's an awesome vision. It is. It's great. And I am just, I'm so grateful to work for an organization that I feel is just um, serving the community and trying to just be serving, serving the community the way Jesus would want to serve the community, you know, and just not only by our words, but also by our actions. And it's just moved by love. And I think that's the greatest thing about safe families. You know, it's about that grace and that compassion that we have for other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. So just to review again, uh, if those who are listening tonight uh, were interested in engaging or contributing in some way to the work of Safe Families, uh, what would be the best starting point for them? Um, the best starting point would be um, emailing me, and I can get them connect connected with Safe Families, or also just going on their website, finding out more information about um, the different kinds of volunteers that are there, as well as filling out an application for the volunteer position that they want to do as well. Um, and like I said, just emailing me. I know Pastor Ben has my email address. You have my email address. And so mm -hmm. um, if they have any questions, I would gladly answer any of them or pass it on to a person who does know the right answer as well. All right. 
Well, good. This is exciting. We've, we've often asked at the end of an interview, what, uh, what do you do to show God's love? And everything you've shared with us is about yeah. showing God's love. That's, that's incredible. Wonderful. So, yes. It was wonderful to hear from you tonight, Val. And uh, I'm hoping that we'll find many other ways to, to be connecting with you and the work that you're doing at Safe Families as we, yes. as we go forward from here. Yes, thank you so much for having me. It's been a delight. Yes. Thank you, Val. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll okay. be in touch. Yes, thank you. Good night. Good night. Well, as I think again about uh, about that story from Acts and how they they shared together everything, I see an opportunity here for us to be to be doing that kind of sharing. Uh, the, the vision of a host family and uh, and the, the family in crisis both being surrounded by that care and love uh, in order that the children may uh, be restored to a place of, of, of peace and strength in their own family. Uh, that's, that's encouraging and exciting. So, do we have a good, good community support kind of song tonight? I think we do. Tell us what we're going to sing tonight. So, tonight we're going to sing Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. And it, it's, I think, a fitting song for just sharing, sharing with others that are in need or hurting in this, this community in this time. And Belle was very inspiring with the things that, uh, that they're doing with Safe Families. Um, so, yeah, let's all just join together and sing Let's be the tie that binds. inspired tonight to connect with Safe Families for Children. I invite you to look up their website. Just Google it on, uh, on the internet and uh, you can find that organization. And uh, Valerie Jones was the name of the person we spoke with tonight, the volunteer uh, engagement consultant for the Rock County chapter. Also, I want to remind you that tomorrow evening uh, we're going to be gathering at 6.30 on Zoom um, to take some time to, to pray the scriptures together. We're going to be looking specifically at uh, the third chapter of Colossians and inviting anyone who would like to, to join us for that gathering uh, to share together and to pray together. Uh, again, that starts at 
And to conclude tonight, um, take us back again to our, our usual ending point with the, with the chant that connects us to the, the deep strength that is within us and surrounding us at all times, the, the mystery of God's presence, uh, a mystery that is ultimately love, and that love then flows through us uh, to others. I think that's exactly what Jesus was inviting as he, as he told that parable about the Samaritan. When we're anchored in that deep love and allow that to flow through us, the two commandments are joined together, to love God with our whole being and our neighbors ourself. So let us connect again to that mystery. Changeless and calm, deep mystery, evermore deep. of calm, that deep mystery. Rest well tonight, and uh, if we don't see you tomorrow night, we'll see you back here on Thursday at 7 o'clock for Evening Focus. Have a good night.